In at number 10, Nicole Arbor. Nicole Arbor, a self-proclaimed stand-up comedian and YouTuber, posted a video back in 2015 called Dear Fat People. The video has since been viewed over 14 million times. Nicole garnered a ton of hate for this video, as she should. There are a bounty of polite ways to tell someone that they should take better care of their body, especially if you have a concern for their overall health and well-being. That being said, it's still something that requires a private and sometimes sensitive conversation. Nicole, on the other hand, bears almost no shame for spouting hatred in such a general way, while at the same time looking like the mean girl in a high school musical reboot. Just taking a look at her YouTube page, every single title is meant to stir up some sh**. So I highly doubt that this is just her online persona. You know what they say, if it looks like a duck, swims like a duck, and quacks like a duck, then it's probably a duck. In at number 9, Adam Blompade. Adam is a 32 year old British YouTuber that had his own channel about pro wrestling. From there, the channel What Culture hired him onto their team and he basically ran their wrestling video department. He was the face of a majority of their content, even having video titles with his name in it. You don't just do that unless you draw people in. You'll never see my name in a YouTube video title for at least another 5 years. With this sudden growth in popularity, Adam unfortunately used it to exploit his fans. This can all be found in his apology letter as well. I read it out, but man is it ever long. Essentially, he asked his fans to send him nudes and would say that he and his girlfriend had an open relationship, which just makes me think of Ross from Friends. We were on a break! They were not in an open relationship though, and sure he did apologize, but man the damage to whether or not you're known for being nice or mean, it's kind of been done, and we're kind of leaning that he's sort of a mean and manipulative kind of guy for doing this, even if he apologized. In at number 7, Michael David Turley. Where to even begin with this guy? Turley, who at the time was 40 years old, wanted to test the response time of the Phoenix Police Department. Uh, Big task, but okay. After the gunmen attacked the movie theater in Colorado, Turley felt it was his duty to make sure his local police were up to par. To do so, he somehow convinced his 16 year old nephew to wrap himself in a sheet, then wrap his face with a scarf and trot through an intersection holding a fake grenade launcher. Turns out they were very fast to come to this crazy scene. His nephew was sentenced to two weeks in jail. Turley would also face a minimum probation, but at maximum, more than five years in jail. He's lucky no one was even injured in this bizarre act all caught for his YouTube page. This dude's gotta be mean and gotta be manipulative in real life. In at number 6, Sam Pepper. Back in 2015, Sam felt the full wrath of the internet. 100,000 people signed a petition to have him banned from the platform because he staged a murder prank. Yeah, murder prank. Does common sense even exist anymore? I mean, at the beginning of the video he said, and I quote, let's see how he reacts to his best friend of 5 years being killed in front of him. My guess is, uh, not well. Well, in the video, he tricks one half of the Vine duo Sam and Colby that their best friend just died. That is really messed up, man. This isn't his first time, though, exposing just how mean he truly is. He had another prank video where he groped women in public using a fake hand, then defended himself by saying that it was a social experiment? I mean, mission accomplished, chief. You're a rude dude. In at number 3, Jake Paul. Dubbed the reality show villain of YouTube by the New York Times, Jake Paul has built his following off of, well, being mean. He tries from time to time to appear differently, but at his core, he's a reckless kid with a lot of YouTube money. The police were called multiple times to his neighborhood in West Hollywood after several noise complaints were filed. Additionally, a local news truck drove there to see what all the fuss was about, and Paul proceeded to jump onto the van while shouting that his neighbors hate him. Following the incident, he also showed no remorse for his upset neighbors by tweeting, Crazy Crazy how many people care about me being a bad neighbor. Yeah, of course we care, dude. They, they probably all pay property tax and they don't want to listen to you or watch you ride a dirt bike across their lawn. Grow up, man. In at number two, Onision. Hope I got that right, but also, I don't care. His real name is Gregory Jackson and he started his YouTube page under the name Onision back in 2006. He was amongst the first wave of people uploading to the channel and building a loyal audience as a result. But by 2012, he was being banned by YouTube's VidCon for some terrible remarks that he made about his ex-girlfriend online. His behavior in videos following became even more disturbing, even filming a woman that was having a mental breakdown, you know, instead of helping like a normal person. Anissian also allegedly engaged in misconduct involving as well. Just so many shady things about this guy, there's no way that he's actually a nice person in real life. Last but not least in our number one spot, Keemstar. Also known as Daniel Keem, this YouTuber has become an extremely divisive character with his hit show, Drama Alert. His channel has over 5 million subscribers, which means that when he says something, it carries a lot of influence. He proved this when he wrongfully accused an innocent man of being a Keemstar had caught wind about a guy on the online video game RuneScape named John Phillips that was allegedly targeting 
subscribers. For whatever reason, Keen believed that he had caught the man on Twitch. He told his subscribers that he was going by an alias named Toby. However, Toby was just a regular 62 year old man trying to work on his Twitch account to build a following in his retirement. The real John Phillips was already in prison, and by the time that Keemstar figured out that he was wrong, it was already too late. Toby was receiving a ton of death threats and was even doxxed as a result. Yeah, it's a mean guy. You know what they say? When you make assumptions, you make an ass out of you and me. So at our 10th spot we have Summer McKean, starting things off with a YouTuber on the beauty girl side of the internet. Now beauty girls are known for many things, from teaching us how to perfect our winged eyeliner, to learning how to catfish guys with makeup. They also supply us with loads of drama. Now let's talk about Summer McKean. Summer is a 20 year old YouTuber with 2.34 million subscribers. Summer pretty much stayed relatively drama free until her finsta got leaked. As a result, racist and disrespectful videos of Summer surfaced and shocked her audience. Several of these videos include her laughing and making fun of fan edited videos. Meanwhile, those fans are her supporters and spend hours making these videos for her. There's also a video of her making fun of her sister for wearing, and I quote, black women powder when she was using a bronzer as a face powder. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please. She's using a black woman powder. It's not bronzer. Fans were outraged when they watched these videos since it is a contrast to the summer that they have been subscribed to. In at number nine, we have Leafy is here. Yeah, okay. Pretty much stating the obvious here. But I mean, the guy's YouTube channel was literally all about making fun of kids and people with learning disabilities, like autistic vlogger Tommy NC2010. So when I first started at IO, Leafy was the king of YouTube. But after that, he took a really long break from his channel when YouTube changed its guidelines so that he couldn't make content he was making anymore. And actually, well, I mean, he could, but he wouldn't get paid for it. He told Drama Alert that he experienced burnout because, quote, YouTube itself was just becoming worse and worse over time. <laughs> Saying that a platform is becoming worse when it's trying to protect its users from harassment says a lot about him. Unfortunately, it's likely that all the negativity toward other people also led to the bully getting bullied himself. In our eighth spot, we have Madison Beer. Madison Beer was discovered back in 2012 by Justin Bieber for her singing abilities. This launched her into having a pretty successful career. Now, people who have gone to high school with Madison claim that she would bully other students there. In particular, it is said that she would pick on a kid for being gay. In addition to this, one fan shared her bad encounter with Madison. During a meet and greet, after getting her pictures taken with Madison, the fan tries to talk to her, but instead gets ignored and dismissed. Okay. Video taken at this event shows Madison gesturing for the next person to come in line for a picture. However, she was the last fan in line. At number seven, we have Lele Pons. Lele Pons, formerly the world's number one Viner, despite all of her success, is obsessed with her influencer status. She always has to have more followers than everyone else, including her friends. We know this from her very public feud with her former best friend, Amanda Cerny. The story goes that Lele knew the code to Amanda's phone for months and would use it to go into it and delete Amanda's Instagram pictures and videos without her knowing. Lele also deleted Amanda's first YouTube video twice. Pons then used her massive platform to accuse Amanda of deleting her content and that was the reason why they weren't friends. It was actually the other way around. Now I don't know, maybe Lele has changed, but I mean, who would do this to their best friend? All right, in our sixth spot, we have Tana Mojo, another YouTuber who drama just seems to follow. This drama takes place last year when a fan encountered her at Coachella. This fan tweeted saying, Tana Mojo is the rudest, trashiest person I have ever had the displeasure of encountering at the festival. Don't you know who I am? Doesn't excuse you from being a bitch. Yikes. Tana responds to the tweet denying the allegation. However, this girl replied saying, You and your boyfriend continually pushed myself and the people around me out of the way during Billie Eilish's set. And when people asked you to stop, that's exactly what you said. Wow, looks like James Charles' super scandalous outfits weren't the only thing bringing in the heat at Coachella. Halfway there, at number five, we have Kavos. Now, Kavos doesn't pretend to be a nice guy, but this guy's whole platform is used to bring down other creators. His videos are all about talking shit. He jumps the gun and the hate bandwagon before everyone else and he banks on hate. I'll just read out a few titles from his channel, okay? I'm Alex needs to be canceled. Do not forgive Jeffree Star. Do not forgive James Charles. TFU is a snake. James Charles is nobody. You get it. Drama is a big money maker. You know that, I know that a little too well. There's a right way to cover it. You don't have to be a complete 
about it and openly name call, you're also supposed to try to be unbiased. Try your hardest to share the other side of the story even if you don't believe it yourself. Or you could just do it Cavos's way and be one of the biggest jerks on YouTube. That works too. In our fourth spot, we have Gabby Hanna. Surprise, surprise, another YouTuber has been in tons of drama. Towards the end of 2019, Gabby Hanna got herself into a lot of trouble. On November 9th, 2019, Trisha Paytas published a video titled, Why I Don't Trust Gabby Hanna. In this video, Trisha Paytas reveals that Gabby contacted Jason Nash when she found out that him and Trisha were hooking up and told him that she had herpes. When me and Jason started hooking up in 2017, she told him, Hey, be careful, Trish has herpes and you're sleeping with her and blah blah blah. Trisha goes on to explain that she barely even knows Gabby and doesn't know why she started this lie. Gabby Hanna's lies don't stop there. She also spread a rumor that Trisha was blackmailing Gabby DiMartino, another YouTuber. Jesse Smiles, Gabby Hanna's ex-best friend, also came forward to discuss the situation and discussed how manipulative Gabby can really be. You know, you're always talking about mental health and therapy and you know how you've gone through your journey with that. Like it's so weird to me that you would bring up someone else's medication that they talk to you about in private. The tea doesn't stop there. Gabby has shared private messages between herself and Jesse to random people online who have tried to paint Gabby as a bad person. Gabby has also DM'd numerous drama channels sharing her side of the story to make herself look good. In these DMs, she has shared private information about Jesse's mental illness, all used as a ploy to discredit her. In at number three, Sniper Wolf. Oh, the wolf pack is gonna come for me now. I'm all right, I have heard from a very reliable source, and I honestly rarely say that, and I don't want to get my friend in trouble, so I'm not going to say their name. I'm not going to say if it's a guy or a girl. So this source of mine, huge YouTuber, does have experience meeting Leah in real life, and she's, uh, she's just not a nice person. Actually, not a nice person is putting it lightly. Maybe Leah just didn't like my friend. I'm not sure how that's possible because my friend is literally like the best person ever. All I know is my friend is literally afraid of Leah and won't talk about her publicly because she's afraid of what she'll do. Leah doesn't play nice in the creator world. She's been called out for falsely flagging other YouTubers videos and threatening to sue them simply because she doesn't like them or she doesn't like that they used her photo. These creators include Scarce, Marky, and GBEE who have all made videos on this. To top everything off, Leah also seems to be harshly critical of other women because she calls them out for getting plastic surgery or flaunting their bodies and photoshopping their photos when she also does those things herself. Let me know if you guys have seen Nerd City's video on her. I highly recommend you check that out if you haven't seen it already. Leah has also admitted herself in her video, mean YouTubers I've met, that she's not friends with other YouTubers and uh, that's for a reason. Coming in at top two, we have Austin McBroom. Or should I say Austin Mc... Rude. You know, it sounded better in my head. All right, so where do I begin? Well, Austin is part of the Ace Family channel here on YouTube with 17.9 million subscribers. Austin has been making headlines for himself lately with lots of scandals, but we aren't gonna delve into that one. Anyway, one thing is for sure, his online persona is way different than who he is in real life. Recently, Austin's brother-in-law, Ryan, who is also a YouTuber, published a video of him pranking Austin. Now, in this video, Ryan gift wraps Austin's car with wrapping paper. A harmless prank, right? Well, not for him. The hidden camera that Ryan planted reveals Austin's true personality when he thinks he isn't being filmed. In this video, you can see him aggressively ripping off pieces of wrapping paper with a serious and agitated demeanor. Where's Ryan? Who would do this to our car? Ryan probably, right? However, once he realized that he was being filmed, you can see his attitude and disposition change as he switches to his usual camera self. Austin has also had several people call him out on his ego. During Christmas, Austin got to Twitter and told his friends that he would be taking a short break. Fans were disappointed since they promised 10 days of filming and posting. He responded to this with, and I quote, some of y'all are ungrateful for free content. Some of y'all should be charged every time you watch someone's video. Now, these are his fans and supporters that he is talking to. I think he could have handled the situation more maturely, but instead he shames the fans instead of seeing it from their perspective. Okay, and at number one, Logan Paul. <sighs> Lots of YouTubers, including Jesse Smiles, have been open about how much they dislike Logan Paul. Jesse describes him as a frat d bag. Back in the day, she pressed charges against a Viner that she dated. And Logan Paul, who had never met her, put her on blast on social media and said she was a liar. She then met him several years later when they were doing a brand deal, and she went up to him to say hello because they were in a professional environment, despite everything he did. And uh, editors, 
Roll the clip. But I look at him and I'm like, hey, how are you? And he literally looks at me and goes like this. What? This is 100% true. Know how I know? Because I know firsthand that that is how Logan treats people that are beneath him. Story time! I also met Logan Paul. And um, yeah, he basically looked at me like I was dirt under his feet, which is like, Okay, we were both at an exclusive creator party for VidCon. People couldn't get into this party. Michael McCrudden was next to me. It's not like I was like some random homeless person that came up to him off the street. Logan was really nice to Michael and they were talking about the Before They Were Famous video Michael did on him. He said it was amazing, blah, blah, blah. And as we were saying goodbye, I smiled kindly at Logan, tapped him on his elbow in a friendly way, and then like just kind of like, and the look he gave me was the exact look he gave Jesse Smiles. Are you kidding me? Never once introduced himself or said hello. He walked away and I felt very uncomfortable. Like, like he thought I was like so insignificant that I wasn't even worth a hello. So, uh, thanks Logan.